This is a very fun problem. In it, we are given these two equations, this one right here, with the corresponding equilibrium constant value, and this one right here with its equilibrium constant value. I'm going to go ahead and number these equation 1 and equation 2. It then says, given this information up here, what is the overall equilibrium constant for this equation right here? So I'll write Kc equals what? That's what we're trying to find out. As it turns out for this problem and this type of problem, these are actually smaller reactions that you can manipulate algebraically and add together to give this overall reaction. Don't believe me? Stay tuned and I'll show you how. First of all, you'll notice that this top re equation or, or reaction uh, has HF on the left, H plus and F minus on the right. Does our final reaction have some of that? Well, it's got HF here on the left, and it's got F minus on the right. It doesn't have H plus on the right, but it's got F minus, so it has some elements of that. One thing you'll notice is that the HF and the F minus only have one as their coefficient in front of them up here. But down here in the overall target equation we're trying to get to, they have a 2. So what can I do? What I can do is I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to multiply it by 2. I multiply every single term by 2. So that then gives this, or equation 1 becomes this. 2HF, and I'm going to leave out the AQ if you're okay with that, just to save myself time and space, yields 2 H pluses and 2 F minuses, which is not a grade you want to get. What does that do to the equilibrium constant expression? Well, as I explained earlier in our earlier video, when you multiply something through uh, an entire chemical equation, that multiplier, in this case 2, ends up becoming an exponent in the new uh, equilibrium constant expression. So Kc becomes 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth squared. Hopefully you're okay with that, because I multiplied everything by 2. That's what you have to do to the equilibrium constant expression of the new equation. Now, let's take a look at this chemical equation number two. I've got this molecule right here yielding proton and this conjugate base. Here's its Kc. I look at this equation right here, number two, and I see are there elements or parts of it that look similar to the equation down here we're trying to get to. Well, I've got this thing right here on the left side of the equation, and I see it down here in the overall target equation, but it's over here on the right. And then in this equation, too, I've got this thing over here on the right side of the equation, but in the goal equation, the target equation I'm trying to get to, it's on the left. So if I could somehow just take this and flip it around, I would be able to get what I've got going on here. Can I do that? I absolutely can, because this is an equilibrium reaction. You can flip it around, no problem, because really it is a two-way reaction. So I'm going to take everything that's on the right here, I'll put it down here on the left, which is 2H pluses plus C2O42 minus. And then this thing that's on the left up here is going to go on the right, H2C2O4. What does that do to its equilibrium constant? Well, if you reverse a reaction, which you absolutely can, the new equilibrium constant becomes the reciprocal. So it becomes 1 over 3.8 times 10 to the negative 6. Hopefully you're okay with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these two equations. And if I've done everything correctly, they should add up to give me this overall target equation I'm trying to get to. You'll note that I've got 2H pluses on the right side of the equation over here, and 2H pluses on the left side of the equation down here. Those cancel each other out algebraically. I now end up with 2HFs plus C2O42 minus, yielding 2F minuses, plus H2C2O4. Does that look like the overall target equation we're trying to get to? Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. Yeah, every single term matches identically. Now, what does the new Kc end up becoming, though? Well, when I take two different chemical equations and add them up, I have to multiply their individual Kcs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Kc value, I'll go ahead and call it K1, and this uh, Kc value, which I'll call K2. If I take K1 and multiply it by K2, that will equal my overall equilibrium constant for this equation, which I will call K3. I'll let you do that on your own.